Hey, it's the Market Sniper back with you. Mm. Yep, we're going to be looking at the bond markets, but I'm going to be primarily saying to you, could there be a turning in on the silver? We're going to be looking at gold, silver ratio and precious metals. But first we start at the bond markets. Why at the bond markets, you ask? Well, there's something going on there and we've been warning and we've had this draw and structure. Let's have a look at the chart straight away. Uh, we've been looking at this draw and structure for quite some time and suggesting that the 30 year has got a run in it that will take it through the 475, probably into the 480s. Uh, and it's actually gained momentum recently. In fact, we looked a little bit off when we first suggested it over here because a whole bunch of nothing happened. It made its first interim run and then it went into a long funk pullback where we all stopped wondering and thinking, even isn't everything just groovy and going to be working out just fine? Uh, and then this falling wedge set up and then it popped again. It ran that first interim again, visited the funnel again. Still, long time, not much progress. Since this point, roughly in, where are we about, first third of July, since that point we've been largely up on yields. This is a two-day chart, so I'm just clustering them together. You've got basically two two-day uh, candles that are red everything else is green and this is looking very very bullish so this original target that we spoke of around the 4.8 level on the 30 year for yields looks like it's going to be coming about can i just also highlight that where you are right now in terms of the market is very very tenuous as well we're at 4.45 run that baby across whoops you're actually higher this is the highest moment you've been at on the 30-year debt market since the events, uh, or since a lot longer than that, but the, the lows that was the March 2020 uh, events, uh, you, this is a new high since that particular low. And if we go out a bit of a larger time frame, just to check that out for you and give you the, the longer scoping on that, how long back do we have to go that the last time the 30 year was at 4.45? Well, let's go and see. Uh, weekly is not going to cut it, friends. We're going to probably need to go at least fortnightly. There we go. Fortnightly we spin and here we come. So this is the current debt level that you're at, 4.45. Don't forget what we've told you. We can see the 4.8 uh, being run for the 30 year. That's a that's a point when it will rest, by the way. You're in an upside HVF. That doesn't mean it's all over there. It's a point where you'll rest. Expect some drama, expect some news, maybe, um, who knows, maybe a nice autumnal climate change lockdown or who knows the the weird flu thingy again we can't tell you we don't know but something's coming but at some point you're first going to make this at 4.75s in our opinion the last time rates were that high that you closed above that was over here <coughs> on that close over there on that fortnight which was <coughs> you guessed it <coughs> 2011 so you are now at rate highs on the 30 year that you have not seen since 2011. So you've been in a, a bear market in, in terms of yields, a bull market in terms of valuations since 2011, the very early part of it. We're actually the back end of 23. Guess what? You're closer to 24's beginning than you are to 23's beginning. Friends, that's a sad statement of a fact, but you're literally knocking on the door of September here. All this was downside. All of it was downside. The big final push for debt. How awesome debt is. Let's all own tons of debt. It only goes up in value. Guess what? Guess what? And now you sit where you sit today. Uh, the debt markets are in huge trouble. Uh, and that was your March 2020 uh, capitulation. And that was the point at which we said you have turned cycle never to be seen again. The extremity of the events they needed to pull at you to do that was the end of the game it is the flag on top of everest in terms of valuations you now have a long long way to fall down and guess what you may have come up slowly but when you fall down you're coming down real fast that's how it works friends that's how it works indeed and this one is coming up with some real zeal and this is debt devaluation it's not awesome economy we can afford to up rates it's debt devaluation you've got to shrink the value of the debt how do you do it 
uh, you allow the rates to go up and the valuations go down. Guess what's happening to the pensions? Most pensions, state pensions and many private pensions that are stuffed with. What are they stuffed with? You guessed it. So that you can receive the annuity when you retire. You must own government debt. Oh, really? Nice. Well, that capital value of that government debt is absolutely falling, my friends. And the rates being paid are having to go up, up, up. You'll even get offered fixed term at your bank. They'll be offering you, look, you haven't seen rates like this in ages. We're doing a special deal. No, they're not. No, they're not. They need your capital. Banks want your money. They want you to lock it away. They want to sit on it and they will pay you a paltry interest in lieu of what is actually going on in inflation. Let me just warn. And also, let me tell you what's going on in the, uh, the fixed bond markets. So uh, this is this is not good. This is not good uh, for the debt markets. And let me tell you, people go, oh, debt markets. But I don't understand debt markets. It never seems to concern me too much. It absolutely will because it concerns the banks. It concerns the, the derivatives. It concerns so many things that are so used to moving so slowly, like old tortoises that live for 140 years. No, not on the downside of a debt deflation. A 40-year bull market is now in a debt deflation stage. And guess what? All the idiots are finding out at about the same time. And what does that mean in terms of the exit? It gets a little bit crowded. It gets a little bit jammed. What about that 10-year on the US side? How's it looking? Let's have a look. Uh, we've got the 30-year for you. There is the 10-year yield. Whoops, that looks pretty sprightly too. Let's have a look at it. Let's go to the daily and you can have a look with me. Oh, so not only is it the 30 year that's going to a new high, uh, we actually look like we are higher on the 10 too. This is one of the benchmark bread and butter debt uh, deals. By the way, this is beautiful rounded bottom. If you want an example of a rounded bottom, you've got one right there. Um, you'll have many people talking about handles on cups and saucers uh, soon if you're not careful. A uh, little bit of witchcraft that nonetheless, but it is rounded bottom. That is a big old cup if you want to call it such a dirty old mug of a bottom there. And then you had that handle and now you're getting another handle and you are running highs. This trend changed there, friends. It changed. It was over. It was over for debt. We told you we were the first to say it. We said get out of Dodge, short TLT, stay short TLT all the way from the top. You want to stay short the yen. You want to stay short TLT. You want to just be short those things. You really need to be short debt and the yen. You need to be short debt and the yen. Listen to me one more time. You need to find a way. But hey, how do you do that? You don't know when to enter. You'll chase in on a high and you'll get shaken out because you'll have too tight a stop and you won't have sized correctly. Guess what? Book a call below. We're always looking for fresh entries to get in on the yen short trade and who you should be shorting it about. Yes, our favorite pair. Find out in our community. Book a call. Link below. How do you short TLT? When should I enter? Not right now. Not right now in this very, very second is what I would say. But we work in entries and we watch it all the time. So we are watching the debt markets. Don't forget, there's also these huge, huge inversions that are yet to flip and are just starting a little bit of a movement up. At some point, my good friends, these things turn around and start racing back. That is when you really need to worry. That is when the drama is coming to town. That is when the pain is about to hit. That is when the headlines are about to be written with whatever narrative they've conjured up this time in their wicked little witches uh, toil and trouble uh, cauldron that they've got steaming up there with all the, the dodgy bats heads in there. That's right. That's what's going on. It's witchcraft. Uh, and this inversion is going to bring you back up with great gusto when it does. And that is going to be a serious economic problem. And can I just warn that every time before you're about to have a hard landing, they start getting soft landing trending. Google trends. Oh, everybody soft landing, soft landing. Oh, it's so easy. It's not so bad. Oh, it's, isn't it lovely? Soft landing, soft landing. Between every hard landing and the big crash was a peak in soft landing searches on Google search. So that is an absolute trap. It's an absolute trap. It's an absolute sign of utter complacency. And that looks like we're going to do just fine. There's no more. No one was searching for recession anymore. You absolutely are in a recession and it's going to turn worse as part of it. And there is no soft landing. 
You heard it from me. And the debt market turned and you need to be short the yen and you need to be short debt. And it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed for three years, friends. For three years, it hasn't changed. The yen's continue to get weaker. The debt has continued to get lower. The yields have continued to get higher. But you heard about so many people, Raoul Powell. Oh, the, the pivot is any moment now. And then we'll be back to boom times. All these people, the pivot is in, the pivot is in, the Fed has pivoted, the pain is over. That's it. It's all coming. They're going to be pumping and printing again. The pump is going to come. They're about to start pumping again. Hunter, whatever, whatever. No, the pain is getting more for you what that will do to the stock market uh, eventually it will uh, hit the stock market but the stock market can go up until then uh, why because of the stagflationary nature of things the money is devaluing until they truly take it away and cause major disinflation there's no value to money in a bank uh, by the way be careful with what you're doing with money in banks you may as well get your grubby mitts on it and do something like precious metals, which we'll be going to very, very shortly. So the bond market is a wreck. The bond market is a wreck. It doesn't matter which inversion you look at. It's a wreck. What are we looking at on this inversion before we say goodbye? Tens minus ones. Uh, I've looked at every single cross that there is out there, uh, and they're all in a very similar state. However, this is, on the tens versus ones, quite a sprightly rebound. It's quite a sprightly rebound from one of the biggest, one of the biggest, let's go three months, Get a bit of history on here. No, we might need more, not three hours. Three months, he says, three months. Uh, you get a bit more history. Since 79, what happened in 79? Precious metals bull market happened in 79. Can I just highlight to you? This is way beyond, you guessed it, the subprime, the COVIDs, the dot com and the Asian crisis. There are all your crises lined up for you. Asian, dot com, subprime, scamdemic, and you are here. And you are here doing a very strong reversal. And when you cross here, it gets over. It gets over, friends. And not since these 80s where there was much less debt, the capability to invert to a far higher layer level was far far higher the sensitivities of the system is far more uh, sensitive today than it was back then to um, interest rate moves we are in precarious precarious territory and a demand destroying event could indeed be coming away so what about uh, the precious metals markets that's your intro on the bonds a bit of love and light a bit of joyfulness wear black have a bounce, have a drink, live for today, tomorrow you die. Never mind, never mind, my friends. We chuckle our way, we chuckle our way, we whistle our way past this cemetery, all right? Let's have a look at the metals. So gold has been disappointing so far. So if you're looking at me right now into the eyes, into the eyes, gold is looking a bit uh, off. It's been skidding into lows. However, something else has been happening, and that is our gold-silver ratio. Our gold-silver ratio. Let's start straight with the gold-silver ratio and wade right in. This is one I put in front of you repeatedly. I'm probably the biggest over-utilizer, although with good cause, I believe, of this one. We said you would get, <laughs> we said so many things on this thing, and all of them have happened so far, uh, that you would get a zig, a zag, a zig, and a zag. And we first started saying that roundabout here. <laughs> And started drawing them you got that zig a little bit complex it got a little bit sexy there with a two tops uh, and then a marginally higher and then it spilt like a drunken sailor down a uh, down a pier uh, and now after a long period of batting into this very very key critical level of 85 you are rolling over but hold on you say it's not a great environment gold's going down Gold is going down. The difference is uh, silver is going down less. So in fact, silver is creeping up and we will show you that in a moment. Gold today uh, has been making new lower lows, but now actually tiny bit up from yesterday and today. So we started a new day, um, judging by this one, UTC plus two, but I'm still in the old day because I'm in UTC minus five. Uh, so you've only just had your first clean good day today. Uh, that is not a red day. Quite a lot of red days on the way down there. Uh, so a little bit disappointing from gold. It's run the technical 1900. But, 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 what about the gold-silver ratio? Well, the key thing is that silver is doing better. Silver is doing better. 
I want to remind you of what we drew for you a couple of days, weeks ago. Let's do a three day. This is what we drew for you on this fella. We said complex left shoulder. You can see the complexity. He's got a watermelon smile for you. There you go, there you go, there you go. A lot of zigging and zagging. But at the end of the day, it is a move like that, which is left shoulder. We also highlighted these structural areas as being very seminal and said, the right shoulder should turn before this level. We do not want it to meet or beat. What has it done? It's turned before this level and did not meet or beat. But it came pretty deep. Anyway, complex as ever. Yes, you're going to get another watermelon smile. What you get on the left, so you're likely to get on the right. So you'll probably have a bit more of this. I don't think it'll go that deep, that uh, line there. Uh, but back down and then back up and then back down and then this. But were we to get, were we to get back up to $26 uh, on the silver, round about there, then we could be looking at a very good uh, winning situation. This, of course, is your head. Also, a little bit of zig and zag, it must be said, especially near the lows, you, especially when you're making pivots, volatility increases, uncertainty in the market, you got a bit of a smackdown. That was a nasty piece of complexity. So that is the sketch of your left shoulder, your head, and your right shoulder. And it's an ugly head because of that uh, um, big dip there. So it is kind of complex, and you're going to get complexity throughout. That's what happens. If a, if a boy is born with freckles, he has freckles everywhere. That's what happens. So this is what you're going to probably get. So it could be a little bit up and down. And let's take it down to the lower time frame and have a look at that on a lower time frame. So without too much further ado, we're going to take you into the lower time frame. So take me to the four hour and show me what you got. So we're in the right shoulder. Uh, and this is what we got. Hold on, let's go one more lower. Let's go to the hourly. So what we are probably seeing is the potential beginning of a little bit of uh, turning. I'm going to move that right shoulder out the way so he doesn't uh, green us out too much. He can go and live on the other side there just for the duration of this clip. So what did we have? We were discussing this in the community. The minute that uh, gold and silver ratio started turning around, you have for yourself a potential neckline on the silver there it was that could have been a break you could have been in there by the way note you also got an upside hvf structure that's right you too could be taking upside hvf structures on the long side in terms of what we are spotting in the markets uh, through our community by booking a call on that very first link in the description below in the description below talk to somebody about what you're doing they're friendly kind and nice and you can say thanks for the chat and go no one charges you anything we're not lawyers uh, and in fact you'll get a demo of our community and you can decide if it's a bunch of people you like um, so that break quickly made target, of course, of the HVF. Why wouldn't it? HVF performed to target often. I'm afraid to say, shock, horror, news alert, smash back down, return to neckline. That happens often too. You saw what happened on XRP, up, 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 all the way back down, 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 down. So now you're bouncing, 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 and now you're thinking, you don't want to chase in there. You don't want to chase in there. There could be a little bit of a calming, but this inverted head and shoulder which we haven't finished drawing for you which we will now do with a fat koki uh, but we had such a nice hvf in there we decided to draw that for you as well gives you that that gives you that and there's your little armpit one or your two and armpit one over there the two touches to the 22.95 i didn't feel that it quite made the three this one didn't quite make the three in a manner that i was happy on other exchanges it may have so i use the data from the exchanges that i am extrapolating that i would end up trading so if you're trading on oanda take the chart from oanda so that projection 23.68 that's a decent move up. Listen, silver's been low uh, for a bit and it was hard hit for a while. Um, so this, this represents immense value. Oh, this is so cheap for silver as far as I'm concerned. But you know, who knows what's cheap and what isn't. What I can say is on this time frame under review, you may well be beginning the beginning of a turn around to the upside. So let's have a look at that a slightly bigger time frame because it looks good on the one hour and could look on the fifth good on the 15 minutes. Oh, let's show you that cheeky little HVF on the 15 minutes, shall we? There we go. You could have, you could have had that. I could have been a contender, he said. That's right. You could have had that one uh, and that would have got you such a nice little move. And then you could have bought it back at the return move of the neckline if you were super smart. I mean, the, the fact that price behavior is 
predictable and has patterns to it is amazing and gives you real opportunities you just have to be up for doing them but let's go up to the higher time frames and sh just remind you how badly we bend it as well for silver on the way down there see the broadening structure warning warning alert alert zhut, broadening on a bear pole zhut, down 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 that's it my friends that's it and then you get a squeezy squeezy japanesey over there with a rising wedge squeeze beautiful little pumper mental zhut. so there's been a little bit of up and down but we haven't got to 26 and this is a long way away from 26 but that's probably the the, the best in this new fresh season the best bull pole that you've had so far after a lot of very nasty ugly red poles there's no more red poles to be had can i say don't forget you can go and have a look at palisade radio's channel actually had very good interesting um article with a gentleman by the name of lynch talking about black rock's role in the silver eagles Go watch some of that. You'll be shocked. I think there's going to be uh, problems finding sufficient silver in due course. Uh, and they are doing excess pricing and they are gouging on premiums. People, because there's outlier demand. That's right. You can also buy silver in 100 ounce bars and not pay those premiums. So if that comes about, that could be very good. Let's go even higher and let's go to the weekly and let's just string this whole baby out a little bit. So here we go, here we go, bring it through, bring it through. Uh, so that was our big pumper mentals push that came out of the low. That was the first Wall Street that took you to just through to the 30. Uh, and since then, it's been pretty dull from silver, let's be honest. Since then, not much uh, good has been there to be found. Uh, and as I've highlighted, that was a key area which you spent very small amount of time below on at this key moment. And that was during the extremity of the rate rises and since then the world has got used used to higher rates and guess what silver is still money but debt is worth a whole bunch less right now and it's going to go only one way in our opinion yet that bar of silver will always be there it'll always weigh whatever it weighed uh, and it'll always conduct met, uh, electricity the same way it always does, better than just about any other metal. Anyway, so that's that. That's silver. Uh, and we also need gold eventually to turn. And I think you might be seeing the beginnings of it, having run the technical 1900 level, which was uh, kind of typical uh, to run the key round number uh, to do. How much further will it go down, do you think? Well, it might be about ready to stop, but it, it also might not. We will have to see. Don't forget those bonds. Don't forget those interest rates. Their climbing in interest rates will put pressure on the likes of Bitcoin and gold and silver at the moment. And so far it has. But eventually, when people start to worry about what's happening to the debt markets, do you want to have money in a bank or would you rather have a bar of silver under your bed? I don't know. I have my own personal opinion on that. And I'm a bit concerned about how much I already have in the bank uh, and thinking about how to get some of it out. Uh, and guess what? It's getting harder. It's getting harder. Lots of questions. Lots of questions. What's this transfer for? Why are you doing this? I don't think we allow that going to that. We don't allow bullion. We don't allow crypto. We don't allow this. Actually, who cares what you allow? You'll either give it to me or you'll send it to who I tell you. But no, no, no. They seem to know better. They seem to know better. Anyway, you'll find out uh, in due course. So that's your update on gold and silver. There will also be opportunities coming in miners. You can find out all those kind of things that we'll be looking at inside the community regarding miners, silvers, gold, FX, the yen, short the yen, short the debt, when to enter short the debt, how to place a stop, what will give you a great break and entry? All those things and more on our link below. Book a call, click a link. Thank you for watching. And that was a quick bond and silver update. Bye for now.